आर ओम ज्ञान तिमिरंधस्य ज्ञानंजन शलाकाय चक्षुर उन्मिल जैना तस्म श्री गुरवे नम श्री चैतन्यामनो अभीष्टम स्थापित जेन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मेय ददा स्वदातिक हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगतपते गोपेशा गोपिका कांतो राधा कांता नमस्ते तप्त कंचना गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय पंचकूभ्य कृपा सिंधुव्यवश पतिता पावने भ्यो वैष्णवभ्यो नमो नम नमो विष्णु पदा कृष्ण प्रस्था भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नामस्ते सारस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाशात देशतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिव साधि गौरभक्तिविंदो हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 राम संकीर्तन की जय हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र की जय 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 श्री श्री शेष भक्त वृंद की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय इसको आचार्य हरि जी भाई गौशला प्रभु पाद की जय निता गौर प्रेम नंदी हरि हरि बो निता गौर प्रेम नंदी हरि हरि बो हरे कृष्णा सो कृष्णा प्रभु जी दंड हरि हरि माता जी दंड प्रणाम हरे कृष्णा सो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट टुडे जस्ट ब्रीफ uh introduction of bhakti rasamrita sindhu bhakti rasamrita rash amrita sindhu so let's see okay hare krishna so uh I don't think that we are going to have uh, Aparna Mataji today, and uh, Rami Reddy Prabhu is here. Nice, uh, Ram Kishore Prabhu, who is not going to be here, and then uh, who else is not going to be here? Uh, Gopal Prabhu is not here yet. Uh, दीपिका I start this uh, letter to Okay so Hare Krishna everybody we'll get into our last module of bhakti shastri and uh what I will do is that uh, once you are basically done with your exam then i'll start sending the some of your homework and uh, your uh, exam score for certificate so if you have not submitted your uh, homework i can't help much so please uh, i know that many of you have not submitted your homework and i know that's how bhakti shastri happens people you know in the beginning they are very excited but then later they slow down or they have other you know things that they comes up so i had made a request that please 
all of your uh, nectar of instruction homework should be in one uh, you know uh, at one place so that uh, uh, I can basically store them name wise name I can't you know if they will ask me okay send me nectar of instruction you know uh, work for Das Hindu Mataji if they will ask me they ask they randomly choose like four or five students and they'll say me send their you know school and homework and everything so I can't send like 20 small small files so it's okay for us to do lesson one lesson two like that by the end of the class uh, same thing for nectar of instruction and for this Upanishad like uh, Mani uh, Prabhu, uh, Mananath Prabhu he has done that he has you know he put everything together and sent it to me like that if put everything in, in, in one page or at one place and send it to me it's not in one page you know in one file and send that to me so that I can save it you know with your name Siradhe Devi Dasi Mataji or whoever is you know there and I can send it to them they can look at it and see if I'm I'm giving it too little mark or too you know much mark and then they will uh, so it's you know it's very very important that's one thing the second thing is that uh, at the end of the uh, you know course under you know review or during the review time if they find out that somebody has uh, something missing you know they haven't you know or I may have to go back and look at everything uh, before we give the certificate if you find out that there is something lagging somewhere then you know I can request you to work on the specific part so some of those things be you know open uh, don't say Prabhu why you know you are asking me now you didn't say before I just want to let you know that uh, that's how it works even you know uh, we get the certificate that's how it was we did everything then teacher said that I want a little bit take some time uh, in fact, I had invited the teacher who taught me Bhakti Shastri. He's a brahmachari. So he he came, you know, he was he looked at everything and he said that if I need anything, I'll get back to you. Then he got back to me saying that for such and such part, I need a little bit, you know, you to work on particular thing. Can you work on that and send it to me? So those type of things, you know, may happen or may not happen. I think uh, most likely we should be pretty good. But if there is anything, uh, we'll uh, get back. So we are going to start a very, very powerful chapter. Very, very powerful module, module six. Very important book. Very important book, in fact. Very, very important book. The Nectar of Devotion, which is basically a translation, not translation, but summary of the Bhakti Rasamrita Shindu. Bhakti Rasamrita Shindu is uh, written by by Sila Rupa, Rupa you know and Goswami and Sri Rupa Goswami you know he was one of the foremost Acharya in our Sampradaya we are also known as Rupa Nuga he's so much so for us for Brahma Gauriya Sampradaya that we are known as Rupanuga, the one who follows <coughs> teaching given by uh, Sri Rupa Goswami. So that's important. That's how important Rupa Goswami is. And then Rupa Goswami basically got the uh, Bhakti Samrita Sindhu, and then the summary of that Bhakti Samrita Sindhu was given by His Divine Gajendra Prabhupada, and you can see that uh, in uh, Sri Radha Dhamudar Mandir, uh, Sri Rupa Goswami personally came and instructed Prabhupada to you know, write some of his commentary in an easy way so that the devotee can easily understand his teachings. So by the mercy of you know, both of these uh, Vaisna devotee, Vaisna Acharya, uh, <coughs> we are going to study uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Shindu. It's very, very important, you know, topic. So before we get into the technicality of it, let us, you know, have few uh, words or few, uh, uh, you know, uh, reference to glorify Sri Rupa Goswami, because without his mercy, we won't be able to understand the uh, 
subject of Bhakti Samrita Sindhu. And, and uh, I know that devotee many times uh, make the assumption that Bhakti Samrita Sindhu is a, a, you know, easy book. Most of the thing we know, but you know, we'll see, we'll see how, how much, you know, we know out of this book and how much uh, uh, do we have to still uh, know about it. So beautiful prayer that normally we chant before we start uh, giving class or any speech. And that prayer is to basically seek the mercy of Srila Rupa Goswami so that we can talk. Sri Chaitanya Manu Avhistam Sthapite Dena Bhutale Sthapitam Dena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Sopanantikam. Okay, you will see that every time we, you know, chant uh, this prayer. Sri Chaitanya Manu Avhistam Sthapitam Dena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Sopanantikam. Manu Avhistam, the one who knows mind of Mahaprabhu. So, uh, Srila Rupa Goswami, you know, it comes in Chaitanya Chaitanya Amrita, that Mahaprabhu personally, and we talked about that, that past time in, uh, in uh, our uh, Isopanishad study, when we were starting the Isopanishad, we talked about it. Mahaprabhu personally appreciated Rupa Goswami for his writing, the ornamental writing, and understanding the mood of uh, Mahaprabhu. So before we get into basically a study of Bhakti Samrita Sindhi, we do need a blessing of Sri Rupa Goswami, who is knower of the mind of Mahaprabhu. Then there is this beautiful verse comes in the first chapter of uh, uh, Adi Lila. And uh, I have been kind of, you know, uh, studying this verse, it's a very beautiful verse that prays uh, position of Mahaprabhu. So this goes like uh, in a very, you know, nice way, it's beautiful verse. It says that, Anarpita charim chirat karunaya avatar avatarinaha kalau asmar paitum unat ujvalarasam svabhakti siriyam Hari Purat Sundara Duty Kadamba Sandi Pitihi Sada Hirdae Kandare Aspurtawa Sachinandanaha Anarpita Charib Chirat Karuna Avatar Nahakalo. So there have been uh, multiple incarnation in, uh, in this age of Kali. Of course, Lord has taken multiple you know, uh, incarnation. But this particular incarnation of the Lord in Kali Yuga is very, very powerful incarnation. It's very, very, you know, potent uh, incarnation. Why? Samar payutam unat ujwala rasam sa bhakti sriyam. Because in this particular uh, uh, incarnation, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is giving unat ujwala you know, like the topmost, topmost, the most precious, you know, melo. What is that melo? Swa bhakti. You know, he is a uh, devotional service. So this personal uh, uh, or this particular appearance of Mahaprabhu is very, very powerful appearance of the Lord because through this appearance, Mahaprabhu is uh, giving the topmost rasa and that's the rasa of his own uh, devotional service. Hari Purat Sundara Dviti Kadamba Sandipitaha Sada Hirdaye Kandare Asfurtava Sachinandana and then uh, devotees praying that uh, let have the causeless mercy of uh, that Supreme Personality of Godhead, uh, Sachinandana, to all the uh, living beings. So, so that 
teaching, the teaching of Swabhakti, which is the topmost of all the teaching. That teaching, which is coming from Mahaprabhu, was presented by Siddharupa Goswami in the form of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. And this teaching is the topmost uh, teaching. So the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu in that way is a very, very powerful book because, uh, because there have been examples of many Acharyas who have come and they have performed Bhakti. They have performed Bhakti and they have made their life successful, but never before that experience so we'll study you know that samanya bhakti and then you know badi bhakti then raganuga bhakti bhava bhakti prema bhakti so these mellows this different mood of devotion so many exalted devotees in past they have experienced and they have made their life successful but never before anybody has captured that essence for practitioner to at least know what is theoretically at least at least in a very theoretical way what is this bhakti or what is this you know badi bhakti or what is this raganuga bhakti or what, all of these terms that we throw left and right this 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 basically opportunities is rewarded after Sri Rupa Goswami. It's, it's mercy of Sri Rupa Goswami that although we might not be in a very practical way or not in a very realized way be able to understand the depth of a mood of you know, bhava or or you know uh, prema but theoretically a technical definition what is badi bhakti what is Raganuga Bhakti? What is Bhava Bhakti? What is Prima Bhakti? What are the, you know, A, B, C, D? Okay. What are the technical understanding? And then trying to work over it and make sure that it becomes our, you know, own realization or our own, you know, understanding or we ourselves, you know, elevate to align with the A, B, C that's being given in a uh, very formula way that was first time done by Srila Rupa Goswami. So we are so much so uh, grateful of Srila Rupa Goswami. That's why we are Rupa Nuga because you know we heard a lot of you know teaching in Nectar of ins uh, Instruction and Bhakti Samrita Sindhu is basically you know uh, ocean. So uh, there are some also words of uh, you know prayers uh to rupa goswami by our other acharyas so here is another one that's coming from uh vishnath Thakur. he says that bhakti purva saritam tamtu rasam pasyad yad adat dhihi yadayat dhihi tam naomi satatam rupa nam priya janam hare though there are other who in the past have taken up the path of devotional service of the Lord, I pay my continual obeisances to Sri Rupa Goswami, who is dear most to the Lord by his mercy, humanity, human being, has received the intelligence to see all rasas revealed by bhakti. So this, uh, this particular uh, verse is cited by Srila Vishwanath Sivarti Thakur in the beginning of Madhurya Kadamni. Madhurya Kadamni also has sour of you know nectar, nectar of you know, nectar one, nectar two, nectar three, like that. So in that he is, you know, before he is starting showering the you know cloud of uh, uh, you know nectar, he is praying Sri Rupa Goswami that although there have been many you know uh, acharyas who have come and they have perfected their life very first time. Sarupa Goswami, who is the dear most of all the, you know, uh, Vaishnava, has presented the uh, shines of Bhakti. And then, uh, 
Sira Jiva Goswami also. Sira Jiva Goswami also is uh, praying uh, Rupa Goswami and he is saying that obsessed by a desire to benefit all the devotee of the Lord, the esteemed author Srila Rupa Goswami compiled his remar uh, remarkable work, the scripture called Bhakti Prasamrita Shindu, using the Rasha presented in Srimad Bhagavatam, which, which appeared within the lotus board of his heart. So, Sri Rajiva Goswami is saying that uh, this beautiful uh, compilation known as Bhakti Samrita Shindu is basically presenting the Rasha, a Rasha that is, you know, uh, present in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. So that's that's how the uh, teaching of Bhakti Prasamrita Shindu is. Okay, so hope uh, uh, first by knowing the uh, importance of Mahaprabhu's coming to this material world and his contribution for the mankind. First, that part should be clear that nobody has ever given such a clear definition, personally taught that what is the bhakti and different stages of the bhakti and how one can, you know, do the uh, self you know, introspection, uh, introspection to find out where they are. All of that has never been done. Okay, that whole teaching was presented by Mahaprabhu. And then Sri Rupa Goswami, Sri Chaitanya Manu Abhishtam, by knowing the heart of Mahaprabhu has compiled the same teaching and then our other Acharyas are appreciating you know, Maha, you know, Rupa Goswami's contribution that whatever he has done is never uh, uh, before done and uh, uh, Bhakti Samhita Sindhu is nothing but the you know concise summary of the Rasha that is uh, presented in Srimad Bhagavatam itself. So before I get to next slide, anybody has anything that they would like to share? Any, anything? Was it clear the the first few points that I wanted to make? Yes, Prabhuji. So Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu is basically very very powerful uh, book, powerful, you know, uh, guidelines and summary. So we'll see, we'll see. So uh, Rupa Goswami wrote Bhakti Samrita Sindhu, but the book that we are going to study is The Nectar of Devotion. And we'll try to understand where this Nectar of Devotion land in comparison to the original literature called Bhakti Samrita Sindhu given by Sarupa Goswami. So Bhakti Samrita Sindhu is a book of definitions. So the original writing that was given by Sarupa Goswami has definitions and we'll see, you know, what is Samanya Bhakti, Anukulenu Krishna no, you know, Bhakti Anusilanam. This is, this is Samanya Bhakti, okay? Even if one is trying to uh, basically come to the stage of, you know, just to start the bhakti definition. Okay, anya vilasita sunyam gyan karmadi anavritam anukulenu krishnanu silnam bhakti uttamam. Here is the very first step. Anya vilasita sunyam gyan karma anavritam. If you are ready to do bhakti, first step, anya vilasita sunyam. Okay, then if you go to sadhana bhakti, three steps. Okay, if you go to Raganuga Bhakti, four step. So like that, we'll see. So I'm not going to basically uh, talk all the uh, verses because that is not the scope of this course. This is a foundational course to give the understanding of some terms. Okay, in fact, in the real, uh, in the uh, the course is not designed to go through the verses. Okay, but we'll little bit expand. We'll try to expand it and we'll try to have some deeper understanding. Bhakti, uh, Bhakti Shastri course is a foundational course. This, is, this course has, you know, intent 
to give some definitions to the world and make devotee aware so that when they are hearing they are able to you know basically understand things which are being spoken in the class this is not really the course is not designed to take you know very uh, deep in the study of nectar of instruction or isopanishad or or even you know uh, bhakti samrata sindhu but we have little bit doing more than is than expected from this course and bhakti samrata sindhu is sindhu it's ocean okay so there is no limit to it and we'll talk about it but i will basically try to uh, expand it i'll try to you know kind of give as much as i think is you know important and then i will try to finish in three months or four months something like that so bhakti samrata sindhu the original book that is written by Srila Rupa Goswami is a uh, book of definitions. But, but question comes at why we need the uh, definition? Well, definition is needed because there are many words, you know, which uh, which appears synonyms or which can have different meaning in different context. Okay, like Atma. Atma has different meaning in different context. Atma means, you know, sometimes body. Okay. Atma also means sometimes soul. Okay. Atma means sometimes also, you know, uh, it refers to from Atma, from Atma, you know. So Atma could have multiple, you know, meaning in different, different contexts. So which one, when we are talking the Atma, which Atma we are talking? Bhakti world is being used in a very loose, uh, you know, uh, way. Like, you know, this Bhakti, right? So, so when we're talking about Bhakti, are we talking about this Bhakti? Like, you know, loyalty for our nation? Are we talking about, you know, Pitri Bhakti, Matri Bhakti, you know? So Bhakti world can have multiple you know meaning okay so what is the real meaning of bhakti what is the real meaning of bhakti we need a definition that's the definition of the bhakti the definition of bhakti is not bhakti of ras bhakti or matri bhakti or pitri bhakti or any other type of bhakti bhakti only applies to krishna or vishnu Okay, so that type of definition, bhakti means this, sadhana means this, you know, raga means this, you know, love means this, prema means this, okay, and all of that has to have the definition. It's very important to know the real meaning. So, Bhakti Samrita Sindhu uh, gives us the uh, uh, definition. It's a very important book because it gives the precise definition of very important items in our Sampradaya like Bhakti, Prema, Rasha and different types of melos. So we'll, we'll come to that stage and we'll talk that what are different you know uh, type of melos. The, the book that we are going to read is not a translation of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Okay so the nectar of uh, devotion is not the translation of the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu that was originally written by Rupa Goswami. Rather, it is a summary study. Okay, so what is translation? Translation has basically, if you look at, you know, Srimad Bhagavatam, what we see, you know, there is a verse, chapter, okay, chapter gives us the theme, okay, oh, this, this, this verse is coming for a particular you know uh, context you know discussion is going on between uh, Sukhdev Goswami and Parikshit Maharaj Sukhdev Goswami is basically trying to answer the question that is asked uh, that's being asked you know by Parikshit Maharaj so there is a you know uh, kind of context and we know that in context there is some discussion so Sukhdev Goswami is speaking a verse and then that verse is given there and then the translation of that verse is given. Then word by word meaning, synonyms are given, you know, synopsis of the uh, words are given, and then the purport is written, okay? So that's basically called the uh, you know, translation. So, Sri Prabhupada basically translated uh, Bhagavatam, that is discussion between Sukhdev Goswami and Prakshit Maharaj. But the nectar of devotion is not a translation, rather it's summary. 
okay so you, you basically read a chapter and after reading a chapter as an author you can basically a little bit you know adjust the main message coming out of a chapter and present as a summary so let me see if I have that slide if not then I'll just try to explain okay I don't have that so why is summary what's the difference between summary and translation uh, Prabhupada uh, chosen to write a summary, not a translation, because this is very, very important book. And what are some of the benefit, benefit of writing the summary? Because uh, summary is easy to read. Okay, so more people read Nectar of Devotion than people have read Bhakti Samrita Shindu. That's number one. More people have read the nectar of devotion, then they have read Bhakti Samrita Sindhu. Why? Because Prabhupada is saying what needs to be said without you know giving verse. As a devotee, yes, for even I maybe now is needed that we need to know the verse. But as such, it's more accessible and easy read for people than uh, reading a Sanskrit text. That's that's one point. The second point is that that when you are writing a essay or summary, author has a freedom to put emphasis on certain part, okay, and not put enough uh, emphasis on some part of the uh, context, okay. So, so if you are writing a summary, author can you know choose that okay in that discussion. I want to basically focus more on limbs of bhakti. When I'm trying to say sadhana bhakti, I can focus, you know, uh, more on the limbs of the bhakti. But there are 64 limbs of the bhakti. Do I have to uh, really emphasize all limbs of the bhakti? No. Nine of those are saranam, kirtanam, vishnu, smaranam, padasevanam, marchanam, bandaram, dasyam. Let's focus more on that. Okay. So when we are writing a translation, it's a little hard. Okay, it's a little hard to be, you know, in that way. Yes, you can write, you know, as much as you want on everything, but then the volume of the book will become too thick. Okay, so how to present something that is still very useful, still very useful and easy to read, then the summary helps because there, you know, certain part that has to be emphasized, that can be emphasized, some part that devotee wants to know for their curiosity, they can refer to that in future and they can, you know, go and always study more. So there were, you know, multiple uh, benefit of uh, writing a summary versus uh, writing. And you will see the Bhakti Samrita Sindhu is a very big, you know, book. We ourselves are just going to study only one section. Out of four sections, we'll study only first section that has 19 chapter. Three sections is not within our scope, not within the scope of this course also. So those just 19 chapter itself is is so much so that we'll feel like that we are floating in the you know uh, information that we'll be getting. So it's really huge uh, compilation by Rupa Goswami. So how to make it easy and uh, and you know short for people to follow the summary was the best way to do. That's why his Yuhayanga Siyad Prabhupada decided to provide the summary to us, okay? So before we start talking about Bhakti Samrita Shindu, I just wanted a little bit, you know, give this background that we are not going to basically see the translation like we see in, uh, uh, we saw in Bhagavad Gita as it is, or we saw in Nectar of Instruction or Isopanishad. Here we are going to be talking more as a summary but we'll emphasize some point and for some of the points, we may pull out some of the uh, reference from Bhagavatam or from you know, Bhakti Samrita Sindhu to make the point uh, clear. Okay, so we'll try to cover preface today and the next class we'll do the introduction and then after that, we'll start getting into the first chapter of uh, Bhakti Samrita Sindhu. So, uh, what is the real meaning of the term Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu? Many of you, uh, I'm sure uh, you are very familiar with the meaning of uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So Bhakti is basically uh, devotional 
service okay and rasa rasa you know may lose uh, rasa all of you know is basically is the mood the mellow so there are different types of mood and there are different types of mellows there are 12 rasas right five of those are prominent rasa but there are 12 rasa so bhakti is devotional service rasa and amrita is basically the nectar okay nectar and then sindhu is the ocean so bhakti rasa amrita sindhu together is basically set of nectarian rasa okay and we'll that's bhakti rasa amrita sindhu is it's a set of nectarian rasa different rasa that provoke devotion towards you know krishna and we'll see uh, what are those uh, 12 uh, rasas and how those rasas help you know one to elevate uh, their devotion towards krishna so rasa there so one thing is very clear that there are mundane rasa and there are bhakti rasa okay so this is bhakti rasa amrita sindhu okay we are going to get the rasa that is devotional service related it's, it's bhakti rasa it's not mundane rasa so let's now you know uh, try to, to see that okay you know we'll see some mundane rasa to here no there will be no discussion of any mundane rasa or if there is some it is to uh, justify the position of the bhakti rasa so what are the some of the you know mundane rush that exist well the taste that comes out of the mundane rasa is temporary okay uh, it does not basically last uh, you know last longer and the uh, beautiful uh, point that is cited here bhajahuriya manna sri nanandana abhaya charana ravindara so chapala subha chapala suphalava lagire so chapal sukha means the happiness that is changing chapal chanchala you know the happiness that is changing is called uh, chapal sukha so the happiness that we get into the material world is chapal is changing you know and it's like it's also like a wave the happiness that comes in the material world is also like a wave okay so that's why it's very important to bring that up because something will happen in your life and that will bring you know one wave will come and that will that will be wave of joy oh you know my daughter today she was awarded you know the the goal or uh, you know it's called what they use the word in high school my son was awarded for that too so you know somebody who's like super good student you know oh it gives me so much happy that you know my son is you know considered such a you know uh, nice student and he's doing so good and then suddenly another wave will come you know what my mom from last four days she has been super sick she's not even able to talk she has very high fever i'm so sad because my mom is sad so that's the nature of the mundane rasa it comes like a wave one thing bring happiness another thing bring sorrow one thing bring happiness another thing you know uh, uh, brings you know Sorrow, Bhajahure Man Sri Nanda Nanda Abhaya Charana Ravindare. Oh, my mind, you know, worship the uh, lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Why? Because by that worship, you know, you will get a shelter or you will get a shelter to the lotus feet, lotus feet of a Lord, which is source of all the eternal happiness okay so we are jiva jiva Prabhupada is writing in the preface of this uh, um, nectar of devotion jiva cannot be happy by this chapal sukha okay you know this is all you know dhana jovana putra parijan what is the value of you know and this one, Komala Dalla Jalla Jeevan Thalamala. You know, 
a drop of water cannot stay at the petal of a lotus leaf. Ko mala thala jala jivan thala mala bhajav hari padanitire. Forget about you know all of this thing and all the time worship the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And how you worship it? Sarvana Kirtan Asmarna Bandhan. You know, then you know the next part of the, that song. So Sarvana Kirtanam Asmarna Bandhanam Pad Sevanu Dasare. You know, nine limbs of the Bhakti comes there. That that's how we can worship the Supreme Personality of you know Godhead. So uh, this Chapal Sukha uh, is not required. So the sukha of the material world is chapel and it's it doesn't guarantee eternal happiness okay so it's not like that you got little bit sukha today so that sukha is now in your account then you know next day you will get some sukha and that sukha will be added in your account the next day you will get some sukha and then that sukha is going to be added in your account so slowly and slowly slowly and slowly although it's not staying with you it's a, you know in a, in a very study way but there is some sukha that's being added to your account in fact none there is none you know that's being added you know that's being added and you know it's kind of a sinusoidal up and down up and down up and down and it's so much sadness sadness comes so much that it completely you know delude and and uh, force living being to forget their happiness and happiness comes so much that they completely forget that right after this there is another hump that will going to take me down and that's going to be only you know uh, suffering so this you know ups and downs that's the nature of the mundane rasa but bhakti rasa is not like that neha vikarme nasu asti patyayona vidyate sulpamapi dharmasya trayato mahate bhayat you know neha vikarme nasu asti pratyayona vidyate you know whatever little bit you know we have and you know whatever little bit endeavor we have made in this process neha vikarme nasu asti pratyayona vidyate svalpa api you know dharmasya even little bit that we have done trayato mahate bhayat and then krishna continues you know saying that one who has you know really not done much but has you know started his account i give them suchinam srimati agehe i give them someone who has advanced and remember these are being spoken in six chapter in dhyan yoga okay so these are not been spoken for bhakti yogi also okay so these you know that uh, that if you have done little bit it's going to retain with you if you have done too much you know arjuna patijan ye name bhakti aparnashati you are fully you know under my protection that part is not even in you know uh, in the bhakti section of the bhagavad uh, gita it's coming into the ashtang yoga section krishna is saying even the uh, person who have you know on the path of ashtang yoga if they have little bit done their account is open how about bhakti how fortunate those people are who have done little bit bhakti okay but what that bhakti is also we have to understand right before we start saying that oh krishna has said that neha vikarme nasu asti patyayo na vidyate i don't have to worry i have started yes we have started but are we really doing the bhakti or something else okay is it like uh, you know we know that there are bhakti also there are three types of bhakti so what type of bhakti you know uh, we are doing you know it's basically very much misrita bhakti or it's pradhan bhuta bhakti or it's kevalya bhakti right bhakti as amrita sindhu gives that, that understanding that you know you don't want to do any type of you know mix devotion krishna says in bhagavad gita vyasatmika buddhair ekha kurnandana bahu shakhanantasya abhyasatmya buddhair so what does it mean that vyasatmika buddhi ekha kurnandana what does it mean it means that first we have to understand what is the literal meaning of this verse the literal meaning of verse is that the one whose uh, faith is form has only one process what is that process okay any other process is not a one process is not a unified process monoism 
एक निष्ठा इट्स नॉट वन प्रोसेस सो वन हैज टू हैव दैट फॉर्म फेथ टू बी फुली सिचुएटेड इन ओनली वन पाथ आई होप आई एम मेकिंग सेंस ओके सो देवसात्मिक का बुद्ध है एका कुरुनंदना टू हैव दैट रेजोल्यूट फॉर्म फेथ इज नीडेड टू हैव ओनली वन प्रोसेस what is that one process that only one process is the process of bhakti so one whose faith is firm that person will take only one process that's the process of bhakti otherwise he will be doing pradhan bhuta bhakti or gunni bhuta bhakti he is not going to be doing the kevalya bhakti so this bhakti samrita sindhu will teach us that what is gun bhuta you know uh, gun bhuta bhakti what is the pradhan you know uh, bhuta bhakti and what is the kevalya bhakti okay we don't want to or at least at least it will help us understand what is our standard okay we have a shraddha and we have swabhava okay shraddha can be also in thamo guna in raja guna and in sat guna so shraddha can be also in tamo guna raja guna and sat guna in ignorance in passion and goodness and our swabhav can also be in tamo guna raja guna and sat guna and at this point i ramacharya das is combination of this shraddha and this swabhava to make that point clear that i have firm conviction that bhakti is only process okay so that maybe if i have that conviction then my faith is satguni faith but my swabhava is still not be there i still might be tamoguni in my swabhava which means criticism uh you know although i know that this is bad but still you will end up doing criticism you know hatred envy greed pride fear lust anger okay so it's not like that devotee is all of you all of you have that's how you were signed up for bhakti shastri course or you are here taking giving your time all of you have your faith i'm not sure 100% it is in the you know it is form but it is very close to be form and once the faith becomes forms you become pure devotee okay so bhava might take some time to become completely you know uh, pure but once you know our faith become form you become pure devotee you are pure devotee once prabhupad was asked you know that how many uh, uh, pure devotee you have in your society but what ask how many people are there you know uh, uh, who are pure devotee in our society bahubad asked one of his you know disciple prabhu uh, can you tell me how many people are there in our society <laughs> and you know said prabhu uh, uh, said bahubad 5000 devotees so 5000 you know pure devotee we have on this planet why prabhu was said that because these people have realized that that bhakti each the process bhakti is the process that will that that's what i need to do but their swabhava might not be helping them their swabhava might not be there where their intentions are but we get awarded for our intention maybe i have some fault in my swabhava people might disrespect for some of my bad swabhava dear devotee you may disrespect me because i have some bad swabhav i am not behaving nicely i am not acting nicely but you know for sure if i have firm faith that bhakti will purify me then then i should not say i but just to say the you know just to make the point i should be considered a pure devotee that's what no i am using the word i forgive me but i am trying to help you understand the concept okay that's how you see 
okay so the faith so that is why bhakti rasamrita sindhu is such a powerful book that although your swabhava might not be helping you to write get there but it will set you up right there to become a pure devotee if you have listen and if you have if you have made an attempt to follow it then you are a pure devotee that is why listen listen shastra you know many people may criticize ramacharya you never go to any other place yes i don't have to go to hod i don't have to go to any other place why why have to go to any other place shabda shabda vishwas kah dir nishaya krishna bhakti kaile sarva sarva siddhi haya mahaprabhu you know this is very clearly posted i don't have doubt yes i am not qualified there i am not there i i understand it i totally understand it i totally get it i have no i have no you know confusion no doubt there that i am not you know qualified to say what i am saying but krishna also says that you don't have to be qualified to say what you are saying as long as you have faith in that statement you should say you should say we'll talk some of these things these are some technical thing so the point that i'm trying to make is that that make your at least at least at least at least at least make your faith form i might not be able to follow it at this point i might not be doing it but have the desire have the desire to be pure devotee have the desire to serve the supreme personality of god it and then the dati buddhi yogam tam tinamam upyanti te krishna says that i give them buddhi and yoga by which they will come to me so 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 bhakti samrita sindhi will teach us when we'll hear the definition of what is sadhana bhakti and who is sadhya oh sadhana bhakti is this and sadhya is this that understanding put faith in that that understanding and that is your substance yes i might not be there so hope the point that i am driving home is being clear and not only that but it will also help you understand how you see others you know how you see others you know i was just talking to you know bhopal prabhu today that i have so much services that i am doing i have been doing it but i have on fought literally you know so badly with anybody nobody can say that ramacharya you have really fought so badly yes some ups and downs comes and goes but very soon very soon i realized that my fault beg the forgiveness so we are like that why i'm saying that not to praise but to make the concept clear you know we have to say some examples to make the concept clear we all will make the mistakes don't worry too much about the mistake okay but put your put your faith form and bhakti samrita sindhu that's what it does giving a theoretical understanding of what is sadhana bhakti what is you know nista what is rati for krishna you know what is ashakti for krishna that definition will come from bhakti samrita sindhu and having faith in those teaching you are aspiring to be there that's your substance that's our perfection so that is why you know i personally think or or our acharyas personally think or everybody you know who are following uh, this uh, brahma adhagurya sampradaya thinks that bhakti rasamrita sindhu is a very very powerful writing so with that i'll give a pause and see if there is any you know these are some of the you know basically a uh, writing i mean we can write i see some of those already so i don't really need to spend time there uh here is basically you know another we are in the preface so in the preface it's been you know mentioned that uh, so in the society today okay people are basically putting themselves in the center what is in for me right what is what what i get you know what is yes yes i can go to temple but what is in there for me prabhu has not put me my name on the four hour kirtan schedule so even if i go there i am not going to get a chance so why should i go you know or why should i go to temple because 
I don't have any service to do in the uh, kitchen because Narayan Prabhu has not put my name to you know, wash the pot. So many things, you know, oh, here if I go, I'm going to be worshipped. People will this and that. So in the purport Prabhupada, in the preface Prabhupada is saying that the whole material world is centered towards, you know, what is in there for me. And then from there, there is a circle of, you know, my family. And then from there, there is a circle of my country. And then there is a, you know, human society. And then out there, somewhere maybe Krishna is or Krishna is not there, okay? So the priority that we have put in our life is completely opposite, okay? It's completely opposite. We have put ourselves in center and then we are building things around us and then going, 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 going. And what that does is that, oh, what Krishna now far, and that's how our faith is. You know, this, this, how, what to learn from here. Oh, Krishna is far away on this circle. So how much he can do for me? Before Krishna can do anything for me, my family members can do for me. My, my, my neighborhood can do for me. If there is fire catching up into my house, my neighbors can help. My wife will try to help. If she cannot help, my neighbors will help. So that's how our thought process is set up. Okay, we do not see that Krishna is directly doing anything right now, you know, where I am. But in reality, whatever is happening to me is not being done by my wife, not being done by my neighbor, not being done by, you know, this Chesterfield County, not being done by anybody else. It's being done by Krishna. Okay, so what Bhakti Samhita Sindhi will do, it will turn upside down. It will turn our understanding upside down. And you see that we putting in the center and thinking what Krishna is doing for us, we'll start thinking, let's put Krishna in the center and see what I am doing for him. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. What is transcendental knowledge? The transcendental knowledge is that, transcendental knowledge is that, that you, we know who the Lord is. Know, so knowing who the Bhagwan is, that's 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 very important thing. First, we have to know Bhagwan. In the preface, that Prabhupada is writing very clearly. First, we have to know Bhagwan, and then we have to try to know who we are. And once we try to know who the Bhagwan is and who we are, then acting in that relationship. Okay. So Bhakti Samrita Sindhu, that's what it does. It basically turns our concept completely upside down. It establishes Krishna in the center. And in that, you know, Krishna being in the center, it positions ourselves somewhere on the periphery. And then it gives a sambandha. It starts, you know, uh, building a relationship. So who for this book is written? This is written for one who is confused and frustrated in life, putting themselves in the center. And it's also written for the people who are now, who are now, who have now, who have recently started practicing the Krishna consciousness. Okay, our goals are still not set right. Our priority is not at right. Okay, so Bhakti Samrita Sindhu is for those who have started practicing Krishna consciousness so that, you know, they can uh, understand. What is the main uh, theme. What is the main learning that's coming out of Bhakti Samrita Sindhi? Bhakti Samrita Sindhu, the main learning that's coming out of is that that we need to water the root, you know, not the uh, branches and leaves and uh, other, you know, uh, parts of the tree. Okay, so we have heard it a lot, but that factually. Bhakti Samrita Sindhu will teach that how to pour the water on the root means how to serve Krishna. Unless one realizes Krishna, there is no question of self-realization. So both self-realization and realization of the God happens together simultaneously. So Bhakti Samrita Sindhu is basically teaching us that serve Krishna 
and establish ourselves and then start you know acting in that relationship in that relationship which is uh, bhakti and then Prabhupada says that in a house there are so many you know uh, switch but what is that one switch that when you press there will be light everything will be lighted up or lit up and and there will be light everywhere what is that one switch Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu teaches us how to press that switch what is that switch what is that switch when you press there will be light everywhere and that switch is bhakti but also we have to know how to do uh, bhakti okay so uh, that verse is very very significant 240 very very important i'll keep on coming to to make it clear what exactly is the bhakti you know yes we do not know at this point so don't you know impose your material understanding on somebody else also all of this thing we'll discuss it's very beautiful you know book as i said we'll enjoy it a lot and this is going to give us a lot of that's why i wanted to keep it at last you know because i can explore more and share a lot of you know things under bhakti samrita sindhu because it's written for that purpose so with that i would like to give a pause today uh, i think it's already 1 32 devotees who are not in the class today for sure they missed a lot you know I personally think that I share a lot of good points. I hope uh, uh, you know they can watch the recording. If not, then and that's how Bhagavad Gita is going to be. It's going to be very rich. Each and every section will really honk on some of the good concept of Krishna consciousness. So with that, I would like to give a pause. Is there any questions? Any uh, anything else? Anybody would like? To